Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing well. Today I'll show you how you can stream your database changes directly into Kafka using a connector called Debasium. We are going to use a Postgres database, fill it up with data, and then we're going to establish a connection with the Debasium connector and then tailor Kafka topic to see how you get a Kafka message every time your data changes. What you can do is have consumers downstream of the Kafka topic so that whenever a piece of data changes, your consumers are notified about it through Kafka and can take uh, actions accordingly. All right, so essentially what we're gonna have is two Docker files, uh, one Docker file, so the Docker Compose file, where we're gonna spin up Postgres, Zookeeper, Kafka, Debezium, and Schema Registry. I'm gonna go over all the details and show you how it works. And then we have a debezium.json file. This is the payload you would need to send Debezium to tell it which uh, database table to set up the connection for. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and spin up everything. So before we spin up everything, I'll run you through the Docker Compose file. All of these are gonna be linked in the description, so please take a look at the code if you need to. So the first thing we're gonna spin up is Postgres, which is a Debezium image. We give it a user, password, and database name, and we're running it in port 5432. And then we have Zookeeper running at port 2181. We need Zookeeper for Kafka, so we need to spin, up, spin it up too. As for Kafka, we are running it in port 9092, and it depends on Zookeeper, because we want Zookeeper to be up and running before Kafka starts up. Then we have a Debezium container running on port 8083. Debezium uses Kafka to send the messages uh, downstream, and that's why you see a depends on Kafka attribute over here. And finally, we have schema registry, which is used by a combination of Debezium and Kafka to schematize every message that Debezium is writing into Kafka. So those are all the services. Once again, I am going to have the Docker file linked in the video description. So take a look at the file if you need more uh, clarity. So let's run this Docker Compose file now and spin everything up. So all you need to do is do a docker compose of D. We're going to give it a few seconds. So this is going to spin up everything. There you go. If you look at the docker UI, you are going to see the one green over here, which is running all the containers. So we have Zookeeper, Postgres, Kafka, Schema Registry, and Debezium, all of them running properly. Now, the next thing you want to do is go ahead and create a table that we're going to use. So if we go to the Postgres container and hit the CLI button here, it's going to take me and uh, take me into the Docker container. And over here, I can just go ahead and log in. So our user is going to be Docker. Our database is going to be example DB. And we want the password to be prompted. There you go. We're inside the uh, Postgres database right now. So let's go ahead and create a table. We are going to do a create table called student. We're going to give it an ID, which is going to be the primary key. And then we're going to give it a name field. There you go. Now, if we do a select star from student, you see we get zero rows. We have ID and name. The next thing you need to do is change the replica identity of the uh, table. Right, so all you do is alter table, public.student, that's your table, and then do a replica identity full. All right, so that should set up the replica identity to full so that Debezium can work correctly. Now we have the database done. Let's do a select star again. Oops, let's just do a select star from student. All right, there you go. So we have the table right there. All right, so the next thing you want to do is set up the Debezium connector. For that, I'm going to go to the this window. I'll show you the code. So for the Debezium connector, you need to give it some configuration to tell it which table to set up the connection for. So you give it a name, 
and then a connector class and plugin name. These are all default configurations, so you don't have to change anything. You want to change the port to wherever your Postgres is running. The host name, in our case, it's Postgres. The user, Docker, Docker, example DB. All of these are coming from the Docker Compose file over here. And then you give it the table that you want to set up the connection for. In our case, it's called public.student. So whenever something changes on this table, the connector should read that change and publish the data into Kafka. All right, so now this is the config file we're going to use. So let's go ahead and set up Debezium. To set up Debezium, you just have to run one command. I'm going to run you through the command. So you're essentially going to do a curl, which is going to be a post request to your local port 8083. If you look at 8083, that's where Debezium is running. So we're essentially making a curl request to Debezium's connector endpoint, giving it some data. And the data is going to be whatever JSON is described in Debezium.json file, which is over here. And we just went over the payload. So let's go ahead and run that command. I'll copy paste it and hit enter. And you are getting a 201 created, which is telling me that the connection has been created. Now, if we look at the diagram over here, at this point, we have the database set up with data. We have the connector set up listening to the student table. And the connector should now, given it's already set up, automatically write it to Kafka now that we have Kafka running too. So what we could do is tail the Kafka topic that Debezium is writing to and then see if the topic is being written to whenever I make a change into the Postgres database. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so to tail the Kafka topic, you could log into the Kafka uh, Docker container and take like tail it from there. But there is a better tool that you can use, which I'm going to run you through over here. So this is going to be our CLI command that we use. It essentially runs a CP, which is Confluence Kafka cat image on the same network. We give it the Kafka port that uh, we have locally and the schema registry and the table. So what this command is going to essentially do for you is go ahead and run the Kafka cat command on the public dot student table schema so that whenever there is some data in that topic, we can easily tail it. So let's go ahead and run it, right? Mm, okay. So I have it over here. There's the command. So we run it. Uh, error broker leader not available. Let's run it again. There you go. Yeah, I don't know why it gives me this the first time, which is kind of weird. All right, so it you can see it says reached end of topic at offset zero. So this is your topic and it's at offset zero right now. So let's go ahead and insert some data to see how it works. So we're going to do a insert into student ID and name. And we're going to give it values of one and let's say Bob. All right, so the data is there. And then let's just do a select star. You say Bob there. Now, if we go to our Kafka tail, you can see we get a payload over here. Right, if you zoom into this, you're getting before, which is null because the data dis did not exist before. And then after in value, you get the row. So you can see it has ID one and name Bob. Let's insert another row. Uh, that's going to be ID two. And let's say the name's going to be uh, Mike. Let's do a select star. You see we have Bob and Mike. If we go over there, you see we have another row. And this has the string ID two and uh, name Mike. So you can see how the change you made in your table is encapsulated in this Kafka message and you can have things downstream. So if we take a look over here, so now every change you're making to your database is showing up over here on Kafka and we took a look at the payload. So essentially you could have the consumers 
listening to this topic just the way we are listening and then take action based on whatever changes so you see in both cases our before is null that's because this is an insert statement and that row was did not exist before so let's do an update to see what happens let's do an update student set name to let's do chain let's just give an actual name let's do Trevor where ID equals two. So let's run it. Oops, name is equal set name is equal to true. Oh, well, best, uh, should be single quote. All right, so if we do a select star from student now, select star from student. Yeah, it's giving me a syntax. This is a weird thing with the terminal, but let's just try to do it again. All right, anyways. So over here, you saw us update Trevor, uh, update whatever is an ID to the name to Trevor. So if we go to our uh, tailing over here, you could see that we have our new piece of data over here so that's how it works you can see your change is being streamed over here whether you do an insert delete or a update you will get your changes reflected over here so hopefully that kind of shows you how cdc works uh, in real life so to recap we have a postgres database which is being listened to by a debasium connector whenever you make any changes to the postgres database Debezium is going to pick it up and then send it to Kafka and all of the data being sent to Kafka is going to be sent to the same topic. So you could have consumers listening to that topic and taking action accordingly whenever a piece of data changes in your Postgres database. So hopefully that was helpful and gives you a bigger picture. Look at my other CDC video if you want a more theoretical uh, view on it and what are some of the actual use cases when it comes to consumers. With that being said, hopefully it was helpful. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And have a good rest of the day. Bye-bye.